Hello dear students, today we are going to learn the first lesson for the first quarter in Math 7, which involves sets. By the way, this is teacher Mary Jane, and I will be guiding you as we learn about sets. Here are the subtopics that we are going to learn for today. Introduction to sets, Venn diagrams, and set operations. The focus of our lessons will be on the following most essential learning competencies or NELCs. First is illustrates well-defined sets, subsets, universal sets, null set, cardinality of sets, union and intersection of sets, and the difference of two sets. Another one, or number two, is for you learners to be able to solve problems involving sets with the use of Venn diagrams. By definition, a set is a collection of well-defined objects or things. When we say well-defined, well, uh, it means that these objects have common characteristics. Okay, so we call these objects or things as an element or an object. But the most common uh, term that we use is element. That's why it says there, each object of a set is called an element or object of the set. Now the symbol that we will use is this, so that is the symbol, or that is the Greek letter, that is the Greek letter Epsilon, okay, we call it Epsilon. Now a set is usually denoted or named using capital letters, so take note of that. We use capital letters to denote sets, and its elements are denoted by small letters that are enclosed by braces. So you should be familiar what braces look like. So these are braces. That is different from this. So this is a parenthesis. So that is uh, wrong. You cannot use that to denote um, uh, sets, okay, or to enclose elements of a set. Now here are some examples of sets. So we have for number one, set A. So we call this set A. This is its name. And these are its elements. We call the numbers inside as elements and those elements are um, separated by commas that's why for number one there are five elements namely one two three four and five which are enclosed by braces so these are the braces another example for number two the name of the set is set b and its elements are A, E, I, O, U. And I know that you know those are the vowels in the English alphabet. Another example, you can also uh, write sets that includes uh, names. Okay, for number three, we have set C. And in, its elements are names. So we have Anna, Rhea, Rachel, and Maria. Okay, for number four, we have the colors of the rainbow. So we have red, orange, yellow, green, blue, and indigo. For number five, we have set E. And we have there the name of some national heroes. So we have uh, Rizal, Bonifacio, and del pillar as well as Nabini. So here are some examples of sets. 
Now let us try this activity as we list the elements of the following. So now for number one, we are going to list down the set of odd counting numbers. Are you familiar with odd numbers? Okay. Odd numbers are numbers which uh, cannot be divided exactly or which cannot be divided exactly by two. So it has a remainder of one. So what are those um, odd numbers? Of course, the lowest is what? So the lowest odd number is one followed by three followed by five followed by seven and so on since there are a lot of numbers that follows after seven so we use this symbol that is called ellipsis okay ellipsis it composes of three consecutive dots okay and with we follow the rules or uh, the definition of set a while ago as we said a while ago that uh, we use capital letters to name them since we are talking about odd numbers so i'm going to use capital o to name this set and then after that equal sign we put an equal sign and then enclose our elements using braces so once again since number one or the set of odd counting numbers are infinite or there are unlimited uh, number of odd counting numbers so we are going to use ellipsis okay so that is for number one number two how about the set of even counting numbers again we start by naming our set so we have we can use letter e for even or you can use any letter that you want now the lowest even number is 2. By the way, even numbers are numbers which can be divided exactly by 2. So we have 2, 4, 6, 8, 10. And again, since there are uh, more numbers to fo that follows after 10, so we use an ellipsis or we use ellipsis. Okay, so that is for number two. Now, how about zero? What do you think? Is it odd or even? So zero, is it odd or even before we proceed? So zero can be divided by two. That's why we consider this as an even number. Okay, but we did not include it in number two since it says there counting number and the lowest counting number is one. That's why for number two, we start with two. But in case it says a set of even numbers, so we may start with zero. I hope that you were able to take note of that. Number three, set of prime numbers. I'll give you a clue. So prime numbers are numbers which have exactly two factors. Okay, exactly two factors. And what are those two factors? It's uh, the number itself and one. So when we say factors, it is the number which can divide the number exactly, which can exactly divide a certain number. Okay, so if we are going to answer that, we start by naming our set. So we have set P, and then we use braces, and the lowest prime number, or uh, prime counting number, is 2. Okay, followed by 3, since 2 and 3, 2 can only be, uh, can be divided by 2 and 1, 3 can be divided by 3 and 1 only, followed by 5, 5 has only two factors, followed by 7, and followed by 11, and I will use ellipsis. 
Okay. So that is the set of prime numbers starting from 2. So take note, 2 is the only even number that is prime. Okay. Only even number that is prime. Apart from 2, there are no other prime numbers that are even. Okay. Number 4, set of composite numbers. So if a prime number has exactly two factors, a composite number has three or more factors. It means that this number can be divided by three or can be exactly divided by three or more numbers. The lowest composite number or counting number that we can uh, write is four. Why? Because four has uh, three factors, namely one, two, and four. Right, because four divided by one is four, four divided by two is uh, two, and four divided by four is one. So those are the factors of four, followed by six, then we have eight, we have nine. What's next? We have, uh, no, we have, let's erase that. Before 12, we can write um, 10, have 10, followed by 12, and so on. So those are the composite numbers. And how about 1? So 1, remember... I'll put it here. One is a neither. When we say neither, it is not prime. It is not composite because it has only one factor in which uh, that factor is one itself. Okay, one can only be divided by one. And let's continue with number 5, the set of the multiples of 5. When we say multiple, this is the result when we multiply that certain number by our counting numbers. Okay, starting with 1. So in, we multiply 5 times 1, the result is 5. 5 times 2, 10. 5 times 3, 15. And so on. We write then M as the name of our set, but again, you can use other letters if you want. Let's start with 5, followed by 10, 15, 20, 25, and so on. So those are the multiples of 5. For number 6, set of the factors of 20. So the factors of 20, when we say factors, again, these are the numbers which could uh, exactly divide 20. And to list it down, we write first the name of the set. So I'll use the letter F. The lowest factor of 20 is 1. It can also be divided by 2, followed by 4, followed by 5 and then 10, and then 20. This time, I will not use ellipses because these are the only factors of 20. We have 1, 2, 4, 5, 10, and 20. For number 7, it says there the set of consonants in the English alphabet. What are our consonants? So we have... Let me name that first. So we have C and then we have B as the first consonant followed by C, D, uh, F, G. 
this time I will use ellipsis but I will end it with Z meaning we have uh, letter B C D F G there are more numbers between G and Z I mean there are more letters between G and Z okay so that has a limit which is Z so unlike the examples for 1 to 5 which have uh, infinite number of elements for number 7 it has a finite number of elements so later on we will have more examples of finite versus infinite sets just take note of this uh, notation so again comma and then I will put uh, three uh, dots or ellipsis and then comma and then we have the last element which is Z and then for number 8 we have the set of vowels I'll use letter V in the English alphabet we start of course with A followed by E I O and U those are the elements or the set of vowels in the English alphabet Number nine, the set of colors and the rainbow. I will use R this time for rainbow. Eight, rainbow. And we have a limited space. I will just use the acronym or first letter of each color. So we have R for red, O for orange, Y for yellow, G for green, B for blue, I for indigo, and V for violet. Take note of that acronym if you are still not familiar with the colors of the rainbow. And for number 10, uh, we will skip this because you have different sectionings in your uh, school. Okay, let's continue. The next lesson is... Uh, the different ways of writing sets you have already encountered one way okay so here are the two ways of writing sets again you have encountered one okay or this method which is the roster method the roster method is a method used by listing down all the elements of a set you simply list down the elements just like these examples, we have the name of the set, and then we have the braces, and inside those braces are the elements separated by a comma or commas. Another example, example, example number two. So the elements are already listed down. And we have here some notes. We name sets using capital letters, and we've done that in uh, in the previous examples. For number two, the elements of a set are enclosed by braces. Again, we use braces, and we do not use parentheses or uh, what do we call this um, bracket? Okay, we use those. We use this for uh, braces. A parenthesis. Okay, that is a parenthesis and that is a bracket. So again, we do not use this uh, two symbols. This is the correct one.
using that method of uh, using the rule method let us list down the elements using the roster method okay let us answer this first before we continue for number one again that is read as set a is the set of all x such that x is an odd number from 1 to 10 so what are the odd numbers from 1 to 10 first i will rewrite the name of the set so we have set a and then odd numbers from 1 to 10 we have 1 followed by 3 followed by 5 7 and then 9 this one is in uh, rule and this are in roster or this are written using roster method okay number two we have set p is the set of all x such that x is a prime number between 11 and 20. Uh, we have i have given you the definition of prime number a while ago Okay, so what is the prime number between 11 and 20? We have, we start with 13. Why? Why did we not include 11? Because we have here the term between. It means that uh, we don't have, or we should not include 11 because we are on only considering the numbers between 11 and 20. The first element is 13, followed by 17, and then we have 19. So those are the only elements of set P. Next, number 3, we have set O. is a set of all X such that X is an odd counting number. Okay, again, odd counting number, so we have set o i will name that as set o and then we have again one i'll fix my braces one followed by three followed by five seven nine there is no limit to it that's why i'm going to use ellipses number four set e is the set of all x such that x is an even counting number greater than 10 so that is the condition again we copy the name of the set and then what is the next counting number or even counting number after 10 we have 12 followed by 14 16 18 we cannot list out all of it i'm just going to use ellipsis or put an ellipsis. Number five, set C is the set of all X such that X is a composite number less than four but greater than zero. Again, composite number less than four but greater than zero. It says they're less than, so the numbers less than four are three, two, and one. Okay, but none of those is a composite number that's why for set c we will put an empty uh, braces okay an empty brace uh, without elements so there is no element another way of writing an empty set is using this symbol okay this is another way of writing a null or empty set and for number six, we have set F, the set of all X such that X is a factor of nine. We name that as F, and the factors of nine are one, three, and nine. That's it. So that is the answer for number six. Now for you to have a guide, if you are still unfamiliar with odd and even numbers, I have here a table. The numbers uh, in purple are odd numbers, while the numbers with no colors or plain white are even numbers.
And then for letter B, I have here a table of the prime and composite numbers from 1 to 100. So if you have noticed, 1 here is neither green nor white. It is shaded blue because we have said a while ago that it is neither prime nor composite. So it is not considered prime and it is not considered composite. Now the numbers in white are uh, prime numbers. So it has only two factors. And if you are going to count all of them, there are 25 prime numbers from 1 to 100. And then we have the composite numbers. These are the numbers in uh, green. Okay. So how many composite numbers do we have from 1 to 100? If we are going to subtract 25 minus 1, so 26, 100 minus 26, we have 74 composite numbers from 1 to 100. The next part of the lesson is on cardinality of a set. This is very easy. Cardinality of a set is determined by the number of elements contained in a set. We simply count the number of elements in a set. For example, we have here set A with elements 2, 4, 6, 8, and 10. We are just going to count how many elements does it have. And that is the answer or that is the cardinality. To denote cardinality, we, we put small letter N and then uh, the set and closed by a parenthesis. After that, we count the number of elements. So we have 1, 2, 3, 4, and 5. The cardinality of set A is 5. Okay. When you see the symbol that is read as the cardinality of set A is 5. For letter B or example B, so we have set B with elements A, B, C. Again, to denote its cardinality, so we use small letter N and then uh, parenthesis enclosing letter B or the name of the set. We have here cardinality of set B is 3 since set B has 3 elements. Okay, that is for cardinality of a set. The next one or the next part is the difference between finite and infinite set. You have encountered this or I have um, I have discussed uh, some of this in the previous example. Anyway, here are the definition of the two finite set has a definite number of elements definite when you say definite it has a limited number of elements or it is countable okay we can count it while an infinite set has an unending number of elements when listed okay an ending it means that uh, even if you write all of its elements it has no end that is an infinite set now I have here a short activity I am going to show you a set and you are going to identify if it is finite or infinite number one is it finite or infinite obviously it is finite number two that is infinite of course because it used an ellipsis and there is no number after the ellipsis. Number three, so that is again an infinite set. Number four, set of odd counting numbers less than 100. It has a limit, okay? By the way, this is written using our rule method, rule method. And it says there odd counting number less than 100. It has a limit. That's why this is a finite set. Number 5, again, in rule method. And it says there prime number between 5 and 10. It has a limit, so that is a finite set. 
number 6, a uh, composite number greater than 16. So the word greater than uh, makes it an infinite set because there are a lot of numbers greater than 16. And let's continue with uh, the difference between a subset and a superset. If A and B are sets and every element of A is also an element of B, then we can say that A is a subset of B denoted by this symbol, or equivalently, B is a superset of A denoted by this. So remember, when we say subset, the subset is always the one which uh, where uh, which faces or which um, this part of our symbol uh, faces okay and then the opening uh, the opening part what, where, whatever it faces that is the superset okay so in this case since the opening is in this area so we can see see that B is the superset, superset, and A is the subset. Okay, again, this is the superset, and the subset is this one. So, if A is a subset of B, but A is not equal to B, for example, there exists at least one element of B which is not an element of A, then we uh, call it a proper or strict subset or a proper or strict superset. Okay, We remove the equal sign and simply write this symbol. So that is for proper subset, and this is the symbol for proper superset. Here is an example. Uh, there are five sets. Set A with uh, elements from 1 to 10. Set B with elements 2, 4, 6, and 8. Set C with elements 3, 6, 9, and 12. Set D with elements 2, 4, and 8, and set E with elements 3, 6, 9, and 12. So we are just going to answer whether the following is true or false. Okay. For number one, we have that is read as A is a superset of B, meaning our all of the elements of set B in set A, let us check. So 2, we have 2, 4, 4 is also in A, 6, 6 is in A, and 8, 8 is also in A, which means that number 1 is true. Number 2, that is read as B is a subset of C, meaning all are all of the elements of set B in set C. Let us check. So 2 is 2 in set C. No, it's not. So based on that first element, we can say that number 2 is false. Number 3, D is a superset of A. That means uh, all of the elements of set A are in set D. Let us check. So... Uh, 1 is 1 in set D, so it is not. That's why based on that, again, we have a false statement. Number 4, that is read as A is a subset of E, are all the elements of set A in set E? Of course not, okay? From the first, ex uh, from the first element 1, we cannot find it in set E, so number 4 is false. Number 5, B is a superset of D. Does uh, set B contain all of the elements of set D? Let us check. So 2 is in B, 
4 is in B and 8 is in B. So number 5 is true. Number 6, C is a C is a subset of E. Let us check. C is a no, I should say C is a superset of E. Well, all of the elements, let us check if all of the elements of set E are in set C. And yes, we have 3, 3, 6, 6, 9, 9, 12, and 12. They have the same elements, so it is proper that we put this symbol under uh, this uh, curve. Okay, so that is true. Number seven, D is a subset of A. So let's check if all of the uh, elements of D are in A. So two, four, and eight. All of the elements are there. So this is also true. Here are more examples. Um, this time it focuses only on um, subsets. Okay, subsets. We have here condition. List down the subsets of set A. So when we say a subset, it is uh, it contains the elements of a certain uh, set or of a given set. So let us check. The answer here is 1 followed by 2. Uh, take note, if you are going to write subsets, it should be enclosed by a uh, by braces. Okay, to denote that it is a set. So we have um, first written each of the elements of the set. Okay, so we started with 1, only 1, followed by 2. And then three and then after that we've combined two numbers so we have one and two followed by one and three two and three after that if we don't have any other combinations we write the um, all of the elements which are one two and three and of course uh, we have the empty or null set okay so that Remember that the empty or null set is always, always a subset of any set. Okay, when you're listing down, you may start with a null set right away or empty set. Okay. Now there is a question here: How many elements are in set A? So we have one, two, and three. There are three elements. Now, how many subsets did it have? Let us count. So we have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Okay, we are asking this or it is being asked because there is actually a formula that we can use to determine how many subsets does a certain set have based on the number of its elements. Here is another example. So we are going to list down the subsets of set B. How many elements are in set B? Okay, we will answer that once we, uh, we can answer that right now. So the number of elements are four. And then here are the subsets. Again, we start by listing down uh, the individual elements. So we have two, four, and then six, and then eight. And then we combine by twos. We have two and four, two and six, two and eight, followed by four and six, four and eight, six and eight. And then after the combination of two numbers, we continue with three numbers. So two, four, and six, followed by two, four, and eight. Then two, six, eight, four, six, eight. And then 2, 4, 6, 8, followed by the null or empty set. If we are going to count, that is 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, and 16. 
later on I will show you the formula okay so here it is what did you notice so if you are given these numbers of elements so if uh, you are given an empty set okay empty set because it has no element at all so it has only one subset and what is that subset that is the null or the empty set and of course it has no proper subset at all because if you are going to remove that we don't have any proper subset at all okay because it has only one another if we have a set having only one element then the number of subsets it's ha it have is um, only two okay and that includes the null set and the set itself okay if removing one that the number of proper subsets it have is one next if we have a set with two elements the number of subsets it have is four removing one we have three proper subsets and so on so these are the examples a while ago three elements and then four elements so if we have five we have 32 proper subset uh, 32 subsets and 31 proper subsets six there are 64 subsets and 63 proper subsets now if you don't uh, whatever the number of element is we use this formula to get the number of subsets we simply um, write 2 and then the exponent will be the number of elements so for instance we have 2 uh, we have a set having 10 elements how do you determine the number of subsets so we have 2 raised to 10 if we expand that we have 2 times 2 uh, times 2 that will be 10 times 1 2 3 4 5 6 7 8 9 and 10 if you're going to solve that so we have 2 times 2 4 4 times 2 is 8 8 times 2 16 16 times 2 is 32 32 times 2 is 64 64 times 2 128 128 times 2 is 256 256 times 2 is 512 and 512 times 2 is 1024 okay that means that a set having 10 elements have a total number of subsets which is 1024 when we remove the proper subset uh, we uh, when we remove the uh, the other set containing all of the elements or all of the 10 elements so the number of proper subsets is 1023 imagine if I'm going to let you list down all of those right okay, anyway let's continue let's try this list down the subsets of set C with elements a e i o u so those are our uh, our uh, vowels first let us answer this question how many elements are in set c so we have five and then how many subsets does it have let us use the formula a while ago so we have two raised to five two times two times two times two times two so we have uh, 32 we should be able to list down the 32 uh, subsets of this so I'll start with writing the null set or empty set followed by uh, a the set containing only a and then we have e and then we have i we have o followed by uh, u okay we have listed down uh, the individual um, elements 
This time, let's combine two elements in one set. We start with A and E. Then we have A and I. We also have A, O, A, U. Since we're done with A and U, we start with uh, letter E as the first element. So E and I. We also have E and O. What else? E and U. Okay, we're done with uh, E as the first element. So we gonna, uh, let's have I as the first element. And then O. I and U. Next, we have O as the first element and of course U as the second element. I think we are done with uh, two elements. Let's take three elements. Let's start with A, E, I. What else? A, E, O. And then A, E, U. And then let's have A, I, O, A, I, U. And then A, O, U. We're done with A as the first element. Let's continue with E as the first element. So we have E, I, O, E, I, U. Are we done? Uh, we can still have E as the first letter and then O is the second letter and then U. So E, O, U. This time we have I as the first letter, I, O, U. We're done with combination of three. We continue with combination of four. We have A, E, I, O. A, E, I, U. What else? A, I, O, U. And then E, I, O, U. Then all of the elements A, E, I, O, U. Let's check if we have 32. Let's use another ink. Okay, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21, 22, 23, 24, 25, 26, 27, 28, 29, 30, 31. Let us check where we missed. Again, that is the pi at the Null set and then A E I O U A E A I A O A U. Okay, let's check first. Okay, so what we're missing here is the combination of the four letters A E O U. Okay, so when we count all of that, those uh, there are 32 uh, subsets. Okay, when we remove um, when we remove this, we will have 31 proper subsets. Okay, so that is the answer to this activity. Now, we have already encountered the null or empty set. Let us just define it. A set which has no element. The cardinality of a null set is 0 and the symbol we use is either this or 
uh, this and empty braces a null set has one subset which is the null set itself we also have what we call the equal and equivalent sets let's see the difference between the two equal sets are sets which have the same cardinality and have the same elements on the other hand we have equivalent sets these are sets that have the same number of elements only okay so we are, what we are considering for equivalent sets is the number of elements so if they are the same then we uh, consider that as equivalent sets and if uh, they have the same cardinality at the same time they have the same exactly the same elements then they are called equal sets these are the symbols that we will use for equal sets in the equal sign and for equivalent sets we have this uh, symbol okay so we have these examples given set a b c d and e with the given elements we can infer that c is equal to d why c and d have one and two as its elements even though the order is different but this we can still see that they have the same elements and of course they have uh, two elements each so now c is equal to d another one b is also equal to e because they have the same exactly the same elements at the same time they have three elements each now we all we can say that a is equivalent to b because uh, a and b both have three elements so disregarding the elements since they both have the same elements so we can say they are equivalent a is also equivalent to set e because they have three elements each b is also equivalent to e because they have three elements they both have three elements and C is equivalent to D because they both have two elements. So those are the symbols that we will use for equal and equivalent sets. So what is the lowest prime, uh, even prime number based on our examples a while ago? That's right. The answer is two next what is the cardinality of a set containing the factors of five okay again when we say cardinality it refers to the number of elements okay of a set containing the factors of five what are the factors of five five can only be divided by one and five so when we ask about the cardinality we write it this way small letter n and then uh, f so there are only two elements so the cardinality of uh, the set containing the factors of five is two that is the answer two is the answer to this question question number three Question number four, what is the cardinality of set A? Set A is the set of all X such that X is a letter in the English alphabet. Okay, so we know that there are 26 letters in the English alphabet. So the cardinality of set A is 26. Question number five, given set a with elements 1 2 3 4 5 until 10 which of the following is a proper subset of a which is the of the following is a proper subset of a let us check for set b we have 1 
3, 5, 7, all of those are in set A. So, set B is a proper subset. Set C, we have 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 in set A. So, this is a proper subset. Next, 5, 10, 15, and 20. 5 and 10 are the only element of set A. We don't have 15 and 20. That's why set D is not a proper subset. Next, set E. There is no 11, 12, 13, 14, and 15 in set A. So this is not a proper subset. For set F, we have 1, 2, 3, 4, until 10 as its element. Uh, remember the definition of proper subset. It should have at least one element that is not uh, an element of the other set okay since they are equal sets so this is not a proper subset of set a okay so that is for question number five let's continue with lesson two this uh, involves the set operations we are going to learn four we have the union intersection um, complement and difference between two sets. First, let us answer this uh, question. So we have true or false. Determine whether the following statement is true or false. We are given set K with elements 3, 4, 7, 8, 9, and 10. Set L with elements 4, 7, and 9. And set M with elements 4, 7, and 10. Okay, number 1. 7 is an element of K? Of course, yes. So this is true. Number 2. 8 is an element of L? We cannot see an 8 here, so this is false. Number 3. 10 is a subset of M. What did I say? When writing a set, it should be enclosed by braces. Since this is not enclosed by braces, it is just a number. So this is false. Number four, four, okay. A set containing four as an element is a subset of K. Yes, that is true. Number five, Nine is an element of L. Since this is enclosed by braces, it means that it is a set. So a set cannot be an element of a certain uh, set. Okay, so this is false. Number six, null set is an uh, is a subset of m of course we have said a while ago that the null set is always a subset of any set so this is true number seven set l is equal to set m when we say equal they should have exactly the same elements but since they only have four and seven as common elements so this is false number eight zero is an element of a null set that is false because we have uh, said that a null set has no element at all. Number nine, L is an element of K. The elements of set K are 3, 4, 7, 8, 9, and 10. This is false. Number 10, M is a subset of K. All of the elements of set M are in K, so this is true. Number 11, L is a subset of M. Of course, this is false because they have uh, different elements or third, different third elements. Number 12, K is a finite set. That is true. Number 13, L is a proper subset of K. Since all of the elements 4, 7, and 9 are in K, this is a... Uh, this is true. 14, M is a superset of K. 
that is false. It should be the reverse. K is the superset of M. Number 15, the cardinality of set L is 3. Yes, that is true because it has three elements. And number 16, this is for our next lesson, but that is read as uh, a cardinality of the union of set K and set L is 9. Well, that is false. The answer should be 6. Okay, we will learn about this later on. Let's start with the union of sets. The union of sets A and B, written as A union B, is a set of elements that belong to either A or B or both. Here are some examples. We have set A with elements A, N, E, and T. Set B with elements P, O, N, Y. So how are we going to get the union of these two? So we simply uh, combine all of the elements of these two sets. Okay, so we have A and E, T. These are the elements of set A. And then we have the elements of set B, which are P, O, and Y. However, there is uh, something wrong with this answer. Okay, so N was repeated. Okay, they have a common element N. That's why we have to remove the other one. That's why the answer to this or the union of set A and B is A and E, T, P, O, and Y. Take note of that. So when listing down the elements or the union of two sets, um, we make sure that there are no repeated elements. Okay, so this is the correct one and this one is uh, wrong. And this is how it looks. This is how the union of two sets look like. Okay, we have this set, set A and then set B. This is their uh, intersection. Here are more examples. So we have uh, set A with elements 1, 3, 5, 7, and 9. Set B with elements 2, 4, 6, and 8. And set C with elements 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, and 6. To get the union of set A and set B, we simply list down its uh, elements. Okay, so we have uh, written it, or we have written it in ascending order. So we have the union of set B and set B is 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, and 9. So the numbers in 1, uh, the numbers in red are the elements of set A, and the numbers uh, in blue are the elements of set B. Next, number two, the union of set B and set C is uh, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, and 8. Again, that is 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, and 8. For the union of set C and set A, we simply combine. I'm going to write it here. So we have 1 is the lowest number, followed by 2, followed by 3, 4, 5, 6, and then 7, and then 9. Okay, so that is the answer to number 3. Next, we have here the definition for intersection of sets. The intersection of sets A and B, written 
as it is. So this is the symbol for intersection. And read as A intersection B is formed by getting the elements that are common to both A and B. So they should uh, both have that element. Here is an example. Given set A with elements 1, 2, 3, 4, and 5. And set B with elements 2, 4, 6, 8, and 10. So we simply um, identify the common element of the two. So 2 is a common element as well as 4. That is then the union, oh, that is then the intersection of set A and set B. So 2 and 4. This is uh, the Venn diagram for intersection. So this is the intersection of set A and set B, this part. Okay. Here are more examples. Again, we are given set A with elements 1, 3, 5, 7, 9, set B with elements 2, 4, 6, 8, and set C with elements 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, and 6. We are going to find uh, number 1, the intersection of set A and set B. The common elements of A and B are, do we have any? Uh, we do not have any. That's why for number 1, uh, the answer is uh, an empty set or null set. For number 2, we have the intersection of set B and set C. And the common elements of B and C are 2, 4, and 6. The answer here should be 2, 4, 6. And we've got the correct answer. This is the solution. Next, for number three, the intersection of set C and set A. So they have both have one. They both have three. They would have five. And that's it. We have one, three, and five as the intersection of set C and set A. Okay, again, that should be three. One, one, three, and five. This should be three. I'll rewrite it. So we have C intersection A is one, three, and five. This is the correct answer. Okay. And the next one, the next set operation is complement of a set. The complement of the set a written as a prime a prime that is read as a prime or complement of a is the set of elements in the universal set u that do not belong to set a remember uh, let us first define what is a universal set so a universal set is the set containing all elements under consideration. Okay, so it uh, contains the overall uh, number or all of the elements that we are considering in uh, in case in a case, okay, or in a certain problem. Here, here it is. The universal set set consisting of all the elements under consideration. Now we have here an example. We have set U with elements P, Q, R, S, T. Set A with elements Q and S. For us to get uh, the element of A prime or complement of A, we simply remove uh, the elements of set A in U. When we remove Q and S, what is left is PRT. So that is the complement of set A. And when we draw a Venn diagram using, uh, when we draw a Venn diagram to show complement of a set, we simply shade uh, the area outside of circle A. And that is, that the shaded part contains uh, the elements of A 
prime or the complement of set A. Here are more examples. So we have your set U with elements 1 to 10, set A with elements 1, 3, 5, 7, 9, set B with elements 2, 4, 6, 8, set C with elements 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, and 6. So we are going to get the complement of all of this uh, three, all of these three items. So the first one, a prime, this is our solution. We are just going to remove 1, 3, 5, 7, and 9. And what is left is 2, 4, 6, 8, and 10. So that is A prime. Number 2, so we are again going to remove 2, 4, 6, 8. And what is left is are the elements of a prime we have one three five seven nine and ten lastly number three c prime we are going to remove one two three four five and six from the universal set and we have or we are left with seven eight nine and ten those are the elements of c prime or the complement of set c so this should be C. We are getting the complement of set C. Now the fourth and last set operation is the difference of two sets. The difference of two sets A and B is the set whose elements belong to A but do not belong to set B. In symbols, the difference of a and B is A minus B, and the difference of B and A is B minus A. Here are some examples. So we have A minus B first. We are just going to remove the elements of set B from set A. And here is the solution. The elements of set B are to a set B are 1, 3, 5, 7, 9, and they both have 5 and 9 as a common element, so we are going to remove that from set A. And what is left in set A is 2, 8, and 10. That's why the answer here is 2, 8, and 10. For number 2, we have B minus A. We are going to remove the common element from set B. So remove 5 and 9, and we are left with 1, 3, and 7. Are you ready for the next lesson? Okay. This time, we are going to solve problems involving sets using Venn diagrams. A while ago, you have seen the Venn diagrams for union, intersection, and complement. First, let us define what is a Venn diagram. A Venn diagram is a, is, a dry, is a diagram used to illustrate the relationship among sets. A particular set may be highlighted by shading the regions containing the elements of the set. So we have here an illustrative example. Okay, so first for us to have or shade set A. Okay, we have here a box first. Okay, this box contains all of the elements of set U. That's why we have here a letter U that is for universal set. As we have said earlier, a universal set contains all of the elements under consideration. So this box is very important. Now, uh, we have here uh, two circles, A representing set A and B representing set B. Now this time I want, uh, we are just going to shade first uh, A, okay? So to do that, let me change my pen first. Okay. And we are going to shade So we are just going to shade circle A. That's it. And that the shaded part contains the elements of set A. 
okay when we shade it properly this is how it will look like next for set b this time we are just going to shade b there you go so again that shaded part contains all the elements of set b and we shade it carefully that is how it will look like number three this time we're going to shade uh, a union with b so let me use uh, this color to show a and then another color to show b since we are talking about union so all of the shaded part is uh, considered the union of a and b that's why when we color it carefully this is how a union b looks like okay so all of it will be shaded all together number four this time the intersection of set a and set b so let us see again this is set A, and then we have set B. Since we are talking about the intersection, we just have to identify the part where N, the markings for A and B intersected, and this is where they both intersected so this is where the intersection of set A and set B is okay and here is a clear illustration of A union uh, A intersection with B number five A prime or A complement so we're just going to remove all of the elements of set A from set U we shade only the outside part and do not include circle A okay we exclude circle A okay, let's shade it okay we can use you can use a crayon to color the outside part excluding A when we do that this is how it should look like Number six, we have B prime or the complement of set B. Again, we shade the outside part of set B. We shade all of the diagram except circle B. It means that uh, all of the numbers or elements outside circle b are included in a prime or a complement so again when we shade that carefully this is how it will look like next number seven a minus b so this is set a or this is circle a we will just remove the area uh, area wherein uh, circle B uh, touches okay when we do that we are just going to shade this part there you go so we only we will only consider this part and that is how it should look like if we uh, color it carefully or shade it carefully number eight B minus A, so we are going to shade the area of set B that but we will remove the area of part or circle A or set A. So this is it. There you go. Shaded region. Number nine the complement of the union of set a and set b remember a while ago uh, the union of set a and b have uh, set circle a and circle b as its shaded part so we reverse that instead of shading 
this the inside of the two circles we are going to shade outside so we are going to shade the outside part of the two circles so the elements of the complement of the union of set a and b are all located outside okay and that is how it looks like if we shade it next number 10 this time the intersection or the complement of the intersection of set a and set b and a while ago the shaded part for the intersection is this part the center right the middle part of a and b but this time the complement is the part that is not shaded a while ago here we go we are going to shade this area so this is a shaded part there you go All of these, the ones I'm putting line, are shaded or will be shaded. Okay, let me just color it that way. And that is how it will look like if we finish shading all of those areas. Now... Uh, we have here another section. In this section, we will understand how we can use Venn diagram in solving worded problems from real life situations. Given two assets, uh, so this is how uh, we can put numbers to indicate the parts of the Venn diagram. So we have part one, part two, and part three. And then part four is outside. Okay. But now, how about if there are three circles? There you go. So we have eight parts if there are three sets involved in a worded problem. So let's try to solve some examples. For example, one. A group of 40 students were asked whether they use either Twitter or Facebook or both. 23 of the students use Facebook and 25 use Twitter. Here are the questions that we will answer. How many use Facebook only? How many use Twitter, Twitter only? And how many use both Facebook and Twitter? Okay. Just like what we've learned a while ago, so we represent those uh, two sets using circles. The first circle is for Facebook and the second circle is for Twitter. So this is the area of the intersection of uh, Facebook or number of students who uses Facebook and Twitter. Okay. So based on the given, the number of Facebook users is 23. So that includes the whole a circle for Facebook and then the number of those students who uses Twitter is 25 now they have an intersection here how do we get the value of that so we need to find the intersection then subtract the sum to the total number of students so we have 23 plus 25 that is the sum of all of it but we need to subtract add, subtract the total from or we subtract the total from this sum so 48 is the sum of all of the facebook users and twitter users and then we subtract 40 that is the total and the result is 8 it means that there are 8 students who uses both uh, Facebook and Twitter okay if that is 8 if that is 8 then we can uh, have the value only 
the value of the uh, the number of students who uses Facebook only by deducting the common or the intersection of the two. So we have 23, the total number of Facebook users, minus 8. This is the number of students who use both. Okay, and the result is 15. The same for Twitter. So we subtract 8 as well. 25 minus 8 is 17. So when we answer... Here is example number two. So the problem is red eyes. 550 students were enrolled for the school year 2020 to 2021 online classes due to pandemic. 170 of them enrolled in math class. 211 enrolled in science class. 224 enrolled in English class. 39 enrolled for both math and science. 40 enrolled for both math and English, 56 enrolled in both science and English, and 21 students enrolled in three subjects. Here are the questions that we will answer. How many students are enrolled in math only? How many students are enrolled in science only? How about for English only? And for the last question, how many students will not be taking up any of the three subjects? So we start, or it is easier for us to solve this if we are going to represent the numbers given uh, using symbols. Okay, so the cardinality of set U, it means all of the students involved is 550. So that is how we will uh, denote it. Next, number of math, math class, so we can use N of M is equal to 170. The same for science, we use letter S. So the cardinality of set S is 211. The cardinality of set E for English is 224. And the cardinality of, what well, it says they're both, it means uh, that is the intersection of math and science. So M and S that is 39 and then the intersection of math and English is 40 science and English is 39 now that should be 56 okay let me uh, remove that this should be 56 and then 21 students enrolled in three subjects okay to to denote that we use this so the intersection of math science and english is equal to 21 and that is how it looks like we first uh, identify or we first um, find the area of intersection of the three circles and based on the given there are 21 of them that's why we have here 21 Next, again, let me change this into 56. So we are done with 21. This time we have um, put 35 here because based on the given, the number of students who uses or who enrolled in science in English is 56. But since there is a 21 here and there are 21 students who enrolled in the three subjects, so we only need 35 more students to fill in this area the intersection of a circle s and circle e the same for the intersection of math and english it says there 40 but since we already have 21 students so we need how many more we need uh, 18 more okay so again this is 56 and 18 for us to get a total of uh, 39. And then next, uh, we need to, uh, there are 224 enrolled in English class. So we need to find the number, okay, that we need to complete the 224 enrollees in English. We already have 19, we already have 21 and 35. So what is or how many do we, or what is the difference between 224 and these uh, three numbers?
that will be the next uh, number that we will get and when we solve for that the answer is 149 so 224 minus the sum of these three numbers 19 21 and 35 the result is 149 next so we are done with the english class we are done with this again this is 56 next to get the number of students who enrolled in science only of course we subtract 2011 minus the sum of these three 18 21 and 35 when we do that the result is 137 okay that means 137 enrolled in science only and lastly for math there are 170 but we already have an 18 here 21 and 19 so subtract that from 170 and the result is 112 now we are done with our Venn diagram those are the important numbers but uh, when we add all of this okay the numbers 112 18 21 19 137 35 and 149 the result is 491 but it says in the problem that there are 550 students it means that uh, out of the 550 students 491 enrolled in these three subjects and there are 59 who did not enroll in any of those three subjects that's why we have here an outside part we write 59 okay 59 now we can answer our uh, the questions a while ago so students are who are enrolled in math only this is the answer 112 students who are enrolled in science only 137 english only 149 and those who will not be taking up any is the number outside which is 59 so 59 is the answer to letter d so that is the solution for example number two here are some exercises that you can answer okay to recap uh, with our lesson for today okay so we have here the universal set u with elements 1 to 10 a 1 to 5 set b with elements 2 4 6 8 and 10 and set c with elements 2 5 7 8 and then let us answer number one the union of set a and set b to get the answer to that we simply combine the elements so we have one two let us arrange it in uh, increasing order so three four five six eight and ten so that is the union of set a and set b for the union of set A and set C, so again we have 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 7, 8, and 10. Next, the union of set B and set C. The lowest number is 2 followed by 4 followed by 5, 4, 5, and then 6, 7, 8 and 10 so that those are the elements of the union of set b and set c next intersection of set a and set b the common elements are two what else four and that's it so the answer to number four is two and four number five the intersection of a and c they both have two and ah, no, no, two and five. So the answer here is two and five. Next, the intersection of set B and set C. We have two and then eight and then ten.
number 7 a prime we are going to remove the elements of set a from u and what is left is uh, 6 7 8 9 and 10 for number 8 we are going to remove 2 4 6 8 10 from u and we are left with 1 3 5 7 9 a minus b remove the elements of set b from a so we will remove 2 and 4 we are left with 1 3 and 5 number 10 b minus c remove the elements of set c so remove 2 remove uh, 8 remove 10 we are left with 4 and 6 that is the answer to uh, numbers 1 to 10 next uh, using the Venn diagram, illustrate each of the following sets. Okay, we already know that uh, for number one, we just shade circles X and Y. And that represents the union of set X and Y. Number two, the complement of set X. So we shade everything except the inside of circle X okay there you go okay next x minus y we are going to remove the elements of set y from x and we are go we are left with only this okay this is the diagram this part is the shaded part next number four y minus x of course we only shade y and we remove the area of uh, x set x and then the intersection of x y and z is this part this is where the three uh, sets meet next we have here a problem 330 students were asked which fast food restaurant they have been to this year the results of the survey were as follows Eight have been all to three. Eighteen have been to Jollibee and McDonald's. Twenty-one have been to Mang Inasal and Jollibee. Twenty have been to both McDonald's and Mang Inasal. One hundred six have been to Jollibee. Ninety-three have been to McDonald's. One hundred thirty-six have been to Mang Inasal. First, we create a Venn diagram and then answer these questions. How many did not go to any of the three? How many have been to Jollibee but not McDonald's? And how many have been to both Jollibee and McDonald's but not in a cell? So let us answer that first by filling in these circles with the proper numbers based on the given. Okay, so we have this circle J for Jollibee, MC for McDo, and MI for Mang Inasal. First, we find the number. Uh, of the intersection of those three so we have there eight so this is the intersection of the three let me write that okay so this is eight next we have um, the next given is the intersection of students who went to Jollibee and McDonald's and that is 18 so Jollibee and McDonald's the total of this part should be 18 but we already have an 8 here that's why the number that we need to complete 18 is 10 so now we have 18 next 21 have been to both Mang Inasal and Jollibee so this area this area 
we are referring to this area. And we already have an 8. So what we need to get a total of 21, subtract 21 minus 8, and the result is 13. That means there are 13 students here. Next, we have uh, 20 have been to both McDonald's and Mang Inasal. So McDonald's and Mang Inasal, the total should be 20. We already have 8. So 20 minus 8, we have 12. Next, 106 have been to Jollibee. So if there are 106 who have been to Jollibee, we already have 10. We have 8 and 13. So 10 plus 8 is 18 plus 13. That is 31. We subtract uh, it from 106. Okay. So we have 5 and then 10 minus 3 is 7. It means that there are 75 uh, students who belong to this area. Next, uh, 93 have been to McDonald's. So 93, we already have 10 and then 8. So that is 18 plus 12. So that is 30. So 93 minus 30 is 63. It means that there are 63 students who belong to this part. Next, 136 have been to Mang Inasal. Again, we already have 13, 8. So 13 plus 8 is... Um, so that 13 plus 8 is... 21 plus 12, that is 33. So we subtract that from 136 minus 33. So we have 103. There are 103 students in this uh, area. Now let's continue. So take note of those numbers 75, 10. 63, 75, 10, 63. Okay, so we create a Venn diagram to model the information. Okay, by the way, there are 46. When we add all of these uh, numbers, so there are 46, uh, num 46 students uh, left. Okay, and they did not go to any of those three restaurants. That's why there are 46 in this, uh, outside those three circles. Now we are done with this. Let us answer the questions. How many did not go to any of the three? Of course, the answer is 46. Number uh, or letter C. How many have been to Jollibee but not McDonald's? So we are going to remove this area. Only Jolly B. Okay, so Jolly B area is this part. We are going to remove uh, this part, this uh, circle, including uh, McDonald's. So we will only add 75 and 13. So 75 plus 13 Jollibee but not McDonald's so 75 plus 13 is how many 88 so the answer here is 88 next one letter D how many have been to both Jollibee and McDonald's but Again, how many have been to both Jollibee and McDonald's, but not Mang Inasal? So to answer that, we are just going to include or look at the diagram. So we are referring to the area, this area. So Jollibee and McDonald's, 
this is their intersection this part Jollibee and McDonald's but excluding Mang Inasal so we are going to remove uh, 8 so we only have 10 the answer to this is 10 okay to the last question that should be 10 okay so those are the answers to the question for this uh, problem for that problem okay and that's it for our lesson thank you so much for listening so our next lesson will be on the absolute value of a number i hope that you continue listening and watching the videos that i'm posting thank you and goodbye